Hey everyone, and welcome to my seventh day here in Hong Kong. The past week has been pretty intense, so the plan for today is simply to take it down a notch, relax, and visit some of the minor attractions this place has to offer. Before I set out on my little adventure, I just want to admire the view. So happy I picked this hotel. The view of the Victoria Harbour is absolutely stunning. I've just finished my breakfast, I had a nice selection of dim sums, some items from the buffet bar, some cheese, some fruit, and a yoghurt. Yeah, I know I'm a bit greedy. Anyway, the first attraction I'm going to go to this morning is the Hong Kong Science Museum. And the best part is, it's only a two minute walk from the hotel. It's two streets away, so I'll be there very shortly. Some guys there on some bamboo scaffolding. Don't think you catch me up there. <laughs> We've arrived already. That was a really short walk. <laughs> Looks like it's right next door to the Hong Kong Museum of History as well. So that's where I'm going to be going to after the Science Museum. <laughs> now then, let's see how we get in and if we have to pay. There's a little thing called Museum Fest as well outside. I'll have a look at what's going on at Museum Fest later. Looks like they're just setting up at the moment because it's still quite early it is. Oh actually it's not that early, it's 11 o'clock. Okay so it's 20 Hong Kong dollars to get in. That's not bad, that's just over two pounds. So let's see what's in here shall we? Okay, that's the schedule for today. If anybody can read that, let me know. All I can do is see the time. And I guess I'm there. I tell you what, I'm just gonna walk around. So let's go to the Earth Science Gallery first, shall we? Pretty cool. How a tornado is created. Hey, so there's a typhoon simulator here. Gotta give that a go. I guess it just blows lots of wind in your face. Okay, it just blows the wind at your feet. I don't think you feel it on the top half of my body. Okay, so that went to, what, 100 miles an hour? Bumps an hour. Okay, I wonder why it didn't blow everywhere. Okay, let's keep looking around. What I think I'm going to do is go to the very top floor and work my way back down to the basement area. So, the escalators are right in front of me here. So, let's see what's up here, shall we? So, it looks like some areas are closed off at the moment. There was a sign outside that says some exhibits are temporarily being closed. Maybe they switch them around, maybe they have temporary exhibits here and switch it around every few months or so. Oh, this looks like a kid's area. Children's gallery. Uh, I don't think I should be up here filming, so I think I'm going to go back downstairs. Okay, this is that machine that sends those bowling balls rolling down all the way down to the basement. Called the Energy Machine Kinematical Sculpture an action-packed thematical structure. And this is the museum's tallest and biggest exhibit. So guess I'm gonna go down the floor. The balls have stopped going in that kinetic energy machine. Don't know what's happening there. Unless you have to press a button for it to work, maybe.
So again, it looks like lots of areas are closed off to the public. So a new exhibition is under planning. Sorry for any inconvenience. So this is the paleontology exhibit. Let's see what they've got here, shall we? We've got a really big shark's teeth set there. I'm assuming it's a shark. Uh, so here we're getting to the fossils at last. Looks like some fossilized lobsters. Or oh, crayfish, actually. Some turtles. I'm going to hazard a guess and say that that's a raptor. But I might be wrong. Looks like one from Jurassic Park, I think. So we've got some petrified trees here. Oh, that's an interesting looking one. And a huge, um, what I'm going to assume is a woolly mammoth. So I remember having a magic trick like this while I was a kid. There's a box you could put something in the top of and then you move it around a bit and then you open the box and because there's a mirror in there that replicates what you're opening it looks like the thing's disappeared you can see the mirror starts there goes along to the edge of there and down there okay it's one of those things Whoa. Not very good at doing that, am I? to go back to the main floor where I arrived on. So I've done all the basement area. That was the prehistoric area, you know, like a fun and games area, environmental area. Now I'm coming back onto the same floor that I arrived on. So let's have a look a bit more around here, shall we? Big group of people coming in now. But actually, just in the last 20 minutes, it's gotten really busy. Okay, I think that's everything here. So the exit is just by here. It looks like you exit by the gift shop. So that's it for the Hong Kong Science Museum. Let's have a look, quick look around by the gift shop, see what they've got. Looks like once you exit, go into the gift shop, there's no re-entry as well. There's a gate system here. Okay, so that's it for the Hong Kong Science Museum. So, the, if I'm honest, there wasn't a great deal of things to see here. The prehistoric area was probably my favourite. Um, but for the price, 20 Hong Kong dollars, so that's just over £2. That's almost nothing, really, for a museum. Right, I'm going to leave here, and I think I'm going to go to the Hong Kong History Museum now, which is right next door. Just got to find the entrance. So, there's a now a queue out the door to come in. So, current time is... 10 to 12. So getting here just after 11 means you can walk through it in. Coming at lunchtime, you're waiting outside. And just for reference, today's a Saturday, the 5th of November. So we've got the Hong Kong Museum of History down there. Okay, bit of a change of plans. I've just gone to the entrance of the Hong Kong History Museum by there. And the lady told me that it's actually closed due to maintenance today. 
what I'm going to do now is go on the MTR over to the Chilin Nunnery. And then next door to that is the Lan Lian Gardens. Let's find the nearest metro station and head over there, shall we? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Code Google Maps, I need to go to the Hung Hom Station, which is a 14-minute walk away from where I am. I'm going to Chun Ma Line to Wa Chi Sha and get up at Diamond Hill Station. And it's another seven minutes walk to Chi Lin Nunnery. So looking at the time, it's going to take me 32 minutes to get there. That's a bit surprising. Anyway, let's get a move on and head over to the Hung Hom Station. So it looks like I'm going to follow some of the path I actually walked to get here. I like walking in the shade. It's always so hot out here in Hong Kong. So it's, even though it's November, it's still like the hottest summer days back home. And the humidity as well feels, makes the temperature go a lot warmer. At least it feels a lot warmer. You'll find in Hong Kong, because there's traffic absolutely everywhere, there's these raised walkways going over the roads and also down the streets just to avoid the traffic and to help speed up pedestrians walking everywhere. It's pretty handy because you don't have to wait at traffic lights to cross the roads. This time of day, they are pretty busy. Okay, just a short walk from here to the station. Okay, this is the Cross Harbour Tunnel. So if you wanted to drive over to Hong Kong, you would do it that way. So it goes from Kowloon to Hong Kong underneath the Victoria Harbour. I'm sure that's the way that I took the bus the other day when I went to Happy Valley Racetrack. So it only takes a few minutes because obviously the distance isn't very far. So you just go down, you go into a dark tunnel and you come out to the other end. And trains over here to the left. I'm going to be going on the Chung Ma line, which is this way. So, I'm looking for the Chung... Ah, it's this way. Chung Ma Line, this direction. Okay, I'm at this train. I'm heading towards Wu Kai Sha. I'm going to take it for about five stops and get off at Diamond Hill Station. The nearest exit for the Tulin Nunnery from Diamond Hill Station is exit C2. It's easy enough to follow all the signs, but you follow the signs to C. And if you get confused for which exit you want to leave by, there's plenty of signs everywhere along the station, so you know which one to choose. So, for example, here is C, and it lists everywhere which this exit goes to. Can you can it see? I want to go to Tulin Nunnery. Exit C. So you've got a picture to show us what it looks like. So, up this way. So it looks like you come out into a sort of shopping area. Let's find out where I need to go. Okay, there's a sign ahead of me here. Chi Lin Nunnery and Nan Lian Gardens. This direction. Okay, it looks like we come to Nan Lian Garden first, so I'll go in here rather than Chi Lin Nunnery. If you're interested, you can even download their app to have a garden tour. There's a QR code if anybody's interested and want to scan it, see what it's all about. So look at that, it's quite a big area it covers. So I think this is the Nanlian garden section and that's the Chinli nunnery. Let's go and take a look around. <laughs> Whenever I can, I always try to walk in the shade as well because of the heat. Oh, heat's awful, it's unbearable here. Even though it's only low 30s, with the humidity, it really adds to the, well, feels like it adds to the temperature. So here's a map of the garden. So we're stepping, starting over by in that direction. So let's go for a walk around, do one complete loop, and then go up to the nunnery. Shows you how they construct timber buildings here without using any glues or screws, nails, etc. Yeah, 
Here's a bit of a fact for you. Natalie Ann Gardens was voted number seven in TripAdvisor's top 10 things to do here in Hong Kong. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a load of koi carp in this pond here. It's so hot again out here that my main camera is overheated and it won't let me record anything. So I've switched over to the GoPro. Hopefully they shouldn't cause any issues because they're pretty rugged cameras. But it is really, really hot here today. You can even get your lunch here if you wanted to. It's handy that they've got water fountains jotted around the gardens as well to stop people dehydrating in this hot sun. Here is a welcome relief to get some cold water. So this looks like the third cafe I've found so far here. So if you're sure of a drink or something to eat, three places you can eat. And it looks like there's a gift shop here as well. Who'd have thought just uh, gardens would have a gift shop and free cafes? <laughs> I just got told off by the lady in the shop. Apparently no cameras are allowed in the shop. Well, that's it for the Nan Lian Garden. Next up, the Chilin Nunnery, which is just over the bridge that way. So let's just take one last look, shall we, of the gardens. Okay, so I'm at Chilin Nunnery. I've just walked over this walkway over the road from Nan Lian Gardens over there. Chiling Nunnery is here, so if you go to one, it's obvious you've got to go to the other. So let's take a look inside, shall we? Now, apparently during the day, the nuns hide away behind the building over there so they don't mix with all the people here. I believe what I just heard one of the tour guides say to another group is to remain pure. They have to stay away from men and I think even do tourists in this area. So here it is, the Nunnery. It's very impressive. We've got these ponds jotted all the way around this courtyard area. So one, two, three, four ponds. Can't see any toys between this one. I'm not sure about the others, but take a look in a minute. And then you've got the main nunnery building over there. So I guess it's a bit like a, a monastery for ladies. And one of the best parts in this heat, all the way along the side is a shaded walkway where you can sit down, which is very welcome. So this is called the Hall of Celestial Kings. There's all the information about it. You can pause it if you want to read it. So I can't use my camera inside, so I'll see you guys in a minute and tell you what it's like. So when you go into the building itself behind me, it's a giant courtyard, a bit like this one, but without the ponds, it's just got trees all the way, mini, well, they're not bonsai trees, but I'm not sure what they are. So miniature trees all the way in there. And around the outskirts, there's gold statues of Buddha and also, a large amount of female deities as well. At the very end, right far that way, there's this huge room with a giant Buddha in there and one, two, four other golden statues. Not sure who the other ones were. There was a sign, so one was explaining, one was Buddha, two assistants each side, and a couple of other people who I'm not sure who they were. I also saw a nun in there as well. Um, 
I think from my Western mind, I envisage nuns wearing the black penguin suit, uh, a big thing over their head. But this one was more like a Buddhist monk. She had a shaved head, but instead of yellow gown, she had a blue or a purple gown on. And she would just tend into one of the deities that's cleaning up around by there. I think that's going to be it for Chiling Nunnery. A really relaxing place to come, nice and tranquil. Sound of water everywhere, it's really nice. And I think I'm going to move on. But before I do, I think I'm just going to sit down in the shade for a few minutes. It's pretty warm. I don't know how many times I say it on this trip, it's pretty warm, but take my word for it, it's pretty warm. So the next place I'm going to be going to is the Wan Tai Sin Temple. To get there, I'm going to head back to the MTR station at Diamond Hill, catch the MTR toward Wan Tai Sin Station, and I'll be there. I might even stop for a drink along the way in that little shopping centre. Wow, it's sunny out here again. So that's it, Chile Nunnery done. So I'm going to cut through the Nanalian Gardens again, head towards the way I came in, which was over in that direction, and then catch the MTR. So that's where the MTR station is, over there in that Hollywood Plaza. There's some big groups coming into the Nanalian Gardens now. Time, if you're interested, is exactly two o'clock. Wow. There's a lot of people going to the mall. I'm just going to go up to the first floor, see if there's anywhere I can grab a drink. If not, I'll catch the MTR and go to Wan Tai Sin Temple. So I've just come up to the top floor because there's a sign saying supermarket. So if it's a supermarket, they've got to sell drink. Like I don't need one from a cafe or some sort of vending machine. Supermarkets are always great because they're cheaper than everywhere else as well, usually. So I'm just walking around the top floor now looking for it. I got myself a drink, it's $10. I just need to find out where to check out. Well, they also serve hot food here as well. There's actually a walnut shop. How didn't know there was that many walnuts to warrant its own walnut shop. Anyway, I paid for my drink. We're gonna go, go outside now and drink it. I'll just find somewhere inside the mall to sit down to drink it. Wow, I'd love one of those, but I don't think I can manage a whole cake at the moment. Yeah. And it's cool. Thanks for that one there. It's 300 Hong Kong dollars, so that's over 30 pounds. Mm. It looked right though. I've had my drink. I'm a bit more refreshed now. Let's catch the MTR from Diamond Hill and go to Wong Tai Sin Temple, shall we? So this is the route I'm going to take on here. I'm going to go on the green line, the Kuan Tong line, towards Po Man Tin. And I'm going to get off at Wong Tai Sin Station. So looking for the green line, it's Po Man Tin. Okay, I've got $63 left on my card, which means in a few more stops, I think I'm going to top it up a bit, add an extra maybe 50 or even 100, which should last me the rest of today and tomorrow. I've got a lot of traveling to do tomorrow. Best thing as well, you can always claim the money back when you leave at the airport, but I'm going to leave it on because I'm going to be coming back to Hong Kong in a few months time. So I'm just going to take my Octopus card home and reuse it again next year. That's good, it's only one stop. So I'm here and I want to go there. Okay, and I'm going to want to leave through exit B. Six Sik Yun, Wan Tai Sim Temple. So it's B3 to go to Wan Tai Sim Temple, which is this way. So the temple is literally as soon as you come out through the station. Token exit is just by there, and the temple is just by here. Uh, if you look around, it's right in the middle of all these skyscrapers all around. What an amazing place to have a temple. But I guess all these skyscrapers was built long after the temple was uh, constructed here. So imagine back then, it was an amazing site. Because the hills, the green hills that you see around most of Hong Kong, just behind there. So this would have been just by itself, like an island. G 
even go up an escalator together. So this is it, one Tyson temple. All the way along here, we've got statues with animal faces on them. I don't know the significance if I'm honest, but there's lizards, cats, spoles, chicken, foxes, horses, serpents, and a few others I don't recognize. So I think I'm going to walk around the ground floor area here first before going inside the temple itself over there. So after you get your stick from the fortune telling thing, you come here and these people read your fortune. So let's go up into the main temple complex, shall we? So these are the fortune telling sticks. So basically you shake them gently, as you can see what's going on there. And the first one that falls out, you then take them to the fortune telling people at the back of the temple over there. And then they read your fortune. I guess this is free of charge to do this. I'm not sure if you need to pay the fortune teller or anything to read your fortune. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little story about this temple here. Back in the dark ages, when I was just a little boy, there used to be a TV show called Roland Rat Superstar. And we're talking a long time ago now, probably the early 1980s. On one of the episodes, he actually came to Hong Kong. And at the time, I thought it was really fascinating, because even at such a young age, I had a love of travel back then. And I can remember specifically, he came here and burned some incense and did some fortune telling by shaking these sticks here and then went to have his fortune read. And in the run up to this trip here, I tried to find where it was that he came to this temple. I do remember what it looked like, but I couldn't find any of the episodes on YouTube or anywhere online. So after searching for all the different temples I could find using TripAdvisor and just Googling, I've deducted that it is the Wan Tai Sin temple, which is this one here. So that is probably the main reason why I'm here today. To remember that Roland Rat was once here at this temple, getting his fortune read and burning incense. The other thing I can remember about that episode is he actually went to the Peninsula Hotel for afternoon tea and met the actor that played Lao Shea in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I don't recall what the actor's real name was, but I do remember it was the guy from Indiana T Jones and the Temple of Doom at the time. And that has brought me to here, Kwon Tai Chin Temple. A really random story, but to me, it reminds me of my youth. Anyway, let's keep looking around, shall we? So there's also a number of priests or monks, or I'm not sure what you call them, but they're quite distinctive. They've got red robes on and a little hat. Here's one of the guys now. So I don't think you can actually get into the actual temple yourself. It's all fenced off everywhere. So maybe that's restricted to just the monks or the priests that are here. And I can't see anybody in there either. So it must be just limited to the incense and the fortune telling. There's some chairs and tables here people just draw writing stuff down in there maybe make it maybe wishing things i don't know i'll be honest i don't know here there's no point making it up for the video you see how busy it is up here lots and lots of people uh, so this is where you pick up the fortune telling sticks from so you pick up the fortune telling sticks in the containers there there's a pen and pencil and some paper there to write things on. 
Okay. Here we go. And it's got instructions here how to seek your fortune. So if you want to read all that, so you read the bamboo container. Get a bamboo container with a number of sticks on the counter. Shake the container carefully to keep the shaking until the stick finally falls out on the ground. Keep the number which is marked on the stick. Each number carries a fortune poem. Make sure you put the stick back in the container and return the container to the counter. You may get fortune poem prediction slip and detailed interpretation from the stalls outside the temple at your own expense. So you can do this for free and it'll get you a fortune poem. But then if you want a more detailed fortune, then you have to pay those guys over there. Yeah, I think this would be a bit hypocritical of me doing this as well, because this is obviously isn't my religion. So I'll be doing it for a bit of fun and games, but it doesn't really mean anything. If I'm honest, I don't really believe in fortune telling. I think things are just the way that they are. Uh, literally, what will be, will be. So shaking that stick, reading the number and getting a poem, I don't think it will change what's going to happen in my life. Sorry if any of you guys believe all this. It's just my personal opinion. Feel free to believe whatever you want. So this is a room that you pay to go in. You then give your blessings to the statues and that monk guy is just walking around with you. I'm not sure what it is. So in, to go in there, it's a hun hundred or 500 Hong Kong dollars. So that was one of the monks or the priests, or I suppose it'd be a Taoist priest actually being here. So I've left that main part of the temple where all the incense burning is. I'm gonna walk around and see a bit more of the place. It's actually quite a large complex. So you've got this huge golden wall all the way along here, fountain, another mini temple there. So that's where I've just come from up there. That's the main temple. So this is one of the lower platform areas of One Place In Temple. I've come down the steps now. There's a fountain just to my left and a gold wall all the way over to the right here. So if you see that, the gold wall with everything kind of on there. So you've got some tower smoke, you got, it looks like cormorant, fishermen, animals, everything worshiping here, that guy there. I think I'm going to spend about another five minutes here walking around Wanting Temple. It is quite an extensive complex and there's lots of sub areas, not just the main temple where the majority of the people are, but all these little areas off to the side as well. With lots of mini temples, I guess you can call them, and little goders everywhere. Plan is once I leave here is go back onto the MTR, go a few stops and then get off by the Kowloon Wall City Park. Okay, I'm gonna go through the Good Wish Garden, up this hill here. Oh, this is bigger than I thought. I thought it'd just be a small little area, but it goes for quite a way down that way. So this is the Good Wish Garden. We've got more pagodas. It looks like it's a bit that's actually closed off again. So a lot of things seem to be under maintenance at the moment. Probably because it's off season, I guess, because it is winter technically, despite the uh, temperature. You can kind of see this pagoda area here. Look down, so this is where I've come from. So that's Wong Tai Sim Temple down the hill over there. Let's go up to the top of the hill by here, have a look at this pagoda area, then go back into the temple complex and then probably go. But it's quite breezy up here as well and it's in the shade, which is very nice. We've got some koi in this pond here. Quite a lot of them as well, actually. Okay, that was one Tai Sin Temple. If you're in the area, I definitely recommend spending at least half an hour or an hour in there. It's quite an extensive complex, so there's plenty to see. And it's interesting just watching people praying with incense sticks, and especially those fortune-telling sticks. A bit different than what we've got back home. So we're gonna head back onto the MTR, 
we're going to get on one of the trains and head towards Kowloon Wall City Park. It's only, I think, three stops, but I'll double check that. So it's not too far away. And once I get off there, I then need to do a little bit of a walk to the park itself because the MTR doesn't stop right by the park. They've even got robots to clean the MTR stations here. Very futuristic. So I'm only going to be going one stop, so I'm one I send to look through. Now the area I'm in now is the real proper residential area. You've just got blocks of flats all the way along. The buildings behind me over there is called the Lock Fu Estate. Um, it's about a 15 minute walk from here to the Kowloon Wall City Park. I'm hoping Google Maps will direct me in the right direction. Fingers crossed it does. So this is a nice relaxing walk under the shade of the trees. I'm in a place called Lock Fu Recreation Ground. And just look at these buildings each side. Uh, when I come to new areas, I like to explore off the beaten track. And I guess walking through this area here can constitute as walking off the beaten track. And it is quite a nice little walk. So it would have been, oh, how long it's going to be? It's going to be about a 15 minute walk from the MTR station to the entrance to the wall park. And um, I'm taking it nice and slowly. Going through Morse Park and the one previous to that was quite nice as well. Because all the trees above my head. It was just shaded and it was a nice breeze, nice and leisurely walk. Enjoyed that. Now we're starting to go up a hill a bit. So my feet are starting to ache. I think we've arrived at Kowloon Wall City Park, right here in front of us. Okay, so here's a map of the park. We're here, I guess. I think I'm going to spend quite a long time in here. This is huge, a lot bigger than I was expecting. Don't think I've got enough time to just see it all. So I'm just going to quickly walk around a few areas and then find out how I can leave. Probably a, there must be a bus station somewhere around here. I'll get the bus back into Sim Sha Shui. Okay, so it looks like the park sits on the former site of Kowloon Walled City and many historic relics are preserved in the park. Hopefully it'll be quite interesting. So let's go for a walk around. So I've walked around the outside for a little bit. I think I'm going to walk into the center of the park now. So here's the map. Where am I? I reckon I'm at the North Gate entrance here. So I'll go, keep going a bit that way and go down there and end up in those terraces there. So there's a few buildings in this area and a bit more vegetation and plant life. I'm going to walk over to there and then go down here and look over the small areas with the bridges and things. I'm not sure if you can see that. There's some bridges, some water features. So here's a picture of the Kowloon Walled City from 1910. So I don't know if these are the walls that I've been walking along now, or if what is there now is just reconstructions. But when you look at the place, it's just so empty compared with what it is now. More pictures from 1910. A few buildings. This one's dated from 1910 to 1920. This is from 1905 to 1910. Again, it looks just like farmyard land, doesn't it, here? And it's very small buildings all the way along. Okay, let's keep walking along, shall we? So 
Looks like there's a few people doing some cosplay here. So can't think of a better place to do the photo shoot though, because look at this in the background you've got. You've got the traditional pagoda there. You've got a waterfall, you've got a pond, and you've got all this classic kind of architecture as well. Okay, I think I've finished in the park now. I've been here for a good half an hour, maybe even 40 minutes. But I think it's time to move on. So I'm going to find a bus that's going to take me into Simcha Shui. And I know I always pronounce that incorrectly, so I do apologize. And I'm going to go and visit the Space Museum. So it's a three minute walk to the bus stop, hopefully. Then I'm going to catch bus number one and be on it for about 40 minutes. So this looks like the way that I should be going to the bus stop. Let's take some last views of this park down that way. I quite like places like this. You know, you're in the heart of a metropolis, which is uh, Kowloon and Hong Kong in general, with skyscrapers all around. And then you find places like this just jotted around, just offering a lot of tranquility and relaxation. So I'd imagine a lot of the locals come here just to escape. <laughs> the real world, you'd walk around, maybe bring a picnic, have a drink, sit down somewhere and just relax. Like if I had more time, I would have brought something to snack on or at least a drink and sat down in the shade and just enjoyed doing nothing. I'm always a bit nervous when I use the buses here because I'm not sure, first, if it's going to go in the right direction. Because if you saw my video a few episodes back when I was coming from Happy Valley Racecourse, you saw that I went on the ding ding and it was in the wrong direction. I didn't work it out for quite a while. At least on an MTR, you've got the map above your head so you know exactly which direction you're going and where you're gonna be. With buses, it's a bit different. I'm not sure which side of the road to catch it from, but hopefully if I just go on the number one bus, that will get me there. If not, I'll be using Google Maps along the way so I can see if I'm going in the right direction. That's what I did to find out I was on the wrong ding ding the other night. Okay, I'm on the main road. I've just left the park now. I believe that the bus stop is just going to be right ahead of me there. Fingers crossed, everybody, that I get on the right bus. So according to Google, I will be on number one, heading towards the Star Ferry, and it should arrive at 17.01. And it's now 16.57, so in four minutes, the bus should be here. Let's keep everything crossed, shall we? Okay, so here's the schedule here. You can see all the stops it's going to take. And I'm going to ride it right to the very end. So I'm on the bus and I'm sitting right at the very front, upstairs. Do you want to see my view? There you go. So I think we're going to be 16 stops along the way. So I get to see lots of the local neighbourhoods, which is a good thing. I enjoy seeing the local neighbourhoods. So the plan is to go that direction and head to the Space Museum. Getting quite busy around here now. I think it's 20 to 6 in the evening. Lots of people queuing up for an ice cream. There is the Star Ferry clock. And the Star Ferry Pier is just in front of us there. But I want to go in this direction. So just to the right hand side of me here, that's the Hong Kong Cultural Centre. We might go there after the Space Museum, but I'm not 100% sure yet. So when I come to Hong Kong next year, that's the hotel I'm going to be staying in. And hopefully you shall have an amazing view of the harbour, which is over there. So we've made it to the Space Museum. Doesn't look like you need to pay for a ticket either, so that's great. Oh yeah, you do. Self-service ticketing kiosk here. So here's my ticket. It costs 10 Hong Kong dollars, so just over a pound. 
Thank you. Thank you. So I've got my ticket from the self-service machine and now I'm going to walk around and have a look at what's in the museum. think that's it that's it i'm coming back out the way that i came in so that was the whole space museum okay i'll have a look upstairs but it looks like there's a space theater up there and i don't think my ticket includes the theater i'll have a look anyway okay thank goodness there isn't a rare area Upstairs, there's the Hall of Space Exploration. And to be honest, this is more what I was looking for for the museum itself. You've probably seen other videos on my channel. I'm really into my space exploration. So let's have a look what's up here, shall we? Hall of Space Exploration. Now that is everything here because the Space Theatre is a separate ticket and there's no need for me to go and see a, a, a film in Cantonese. So I think that's it. I'm going to leave the Space Museum. So from what I could see there was actually only one space artifact in the entire museum which is that flown flag. And if I'm honest my own personal space collection is far more extensive than here. Maybe I should open a museum one day. But just one space flown flag. I wouldn't class that as a museum, to be honest. So, the peninsula behind me is where I stayed when I came to Hong Kong back in 2006. And it's still got to be one of my favorite hotels I've ever stayed in. It's an amazing location. From the room I was in, right up there, I had a perfect view of Victoria Harbour in front of me. It was actually that hotel that made me decide it's worth paying extra for views in certain locations around the world. Large majority of the time, I get the cheapest room I can possibly get in any hotel. But when it comes to places like this, when there's a possibility of a view like the Victoria Harbour, I do pay extra because it is, it is justified. It honestly is. Although I did look at the price for that hotel this trip, and it was out of my budget for the basic package. I think a twin harbour view room. I think it was starting off at seven or eight hundred pounds per night. So this time my pockets aren't that big. So that's why I'm staying in the Intercontinental Grand Stafford, which is still a great hotel, but it's not the peninsula. And the thing with the peninsula here is further on the right hand side so you get more of those iconic Hong Kong buildings with all the illuminations and everything compared with the Grand Stamford, which is down that way a bit. It doesn't have those iconic buildings. But also the peninsula, I don't know if they're there now, but all in that area, the lobby, well, the place where the cars are, these are normally filled with Rolls Royces because they own a fleet of Rolls Royces and they can actually pick you up from the airport in a Rolls Royce. And that's where I did last time. So we had champagne in the back of a Rolls Royce coming to this hotel. It was a great experience back in 2006, so a long time ago now. Just next to the Space Museum is the Hong Kong Museum of Art. So if that's open, I'm not sure if it will be because it's getting late. Well, I say it's getting late. It's quarter past six, so it's not very late, but it's really dark. If it looks like it's open, I might go in the Hong Kong Museum of Art. I've never been there before. But you can tell that this area really starts to get busy at night. People everywhere. And to be honest, I don't blame them because once you just walk that way a bit, 
you're on the harbour and you've got that amazing view of the Hong Kong skyline. I could just sit there for hours and just look at it, but I just haven't had the time on this trip to do something like that. Here's the Hong Kong Museum of Art here. That's the Space Museum there, so you can see it's right next door to each other. Do you know what? I've changed my mind. I don't think I'm in the mood for touring an art museum at the moment, an art gallery. I'm getting pretty hungry, so I might go and find somewhere to eat. Yeah. So I think I'm going to get in another bus and head north. When I say north, it's up the road. I'll look out the window along the way, and if I get to an area which looks like there's a lot of promising restaurants or cafes, I'm just going to get out. So looking at the map, I'm going to go on bus number two, and that's going to take me up towards the Sham Shi Po area. Walking along the harbour here. Again, such a great view to the left of me. All the buildings of the Hong Kong skyline. It's absolutely amazing. I love it looking at that, that skyline. There's a lot of bus stands here to choose from. Not sure where number two is going to go from. Okay, here's who? Who are you? Okay, Jordan Moncock, Sham Shi Po. So I'm going to sit downstairs this time so I can easily get off if I see anywhere I like. I've come to a Dai Pai Dong here in Sham Shi Po. It's called Oi Man Seng. It's basically a traditional street food uh, restaurant that serves food like this. So I've got a ticket. I'm A092. I've now got to wait my turn. But you can see it's everything really traditional here. I'll talk about what a Dai Pai Dong is later when after I've finished because it's rather busy. And when I say it's rather busy, this is everybody that's waiting to go in. So you can see. This is a very popular place and it's dinner time, <laughs> so it's going to be really busy. So I think it's pretty obvious I'm going to be sharing a table with another group of people. But there you go, so this is what it looks like. And they call you ticket. You can see on the screen there. So it should flash up in a while, I should get mine on there. Looks like they pretty much own every single store on this street. Every single building has got people sitting in it, and every single one of these is the Dai Pai Dong, which is the Oh Man Sing Dai Pai Dong. So I'd imagine it started off pretty small, and once it became more and more popular, they bought out all the neighboring shops and turned them into places to sit to eat their food. So that's the name of the place Oi Man Sang Kitchen. And it's been established here since 1956. Just to give you an idea of menu, quite extensive. There's a wide selection on here. That's just one page. That's another page. That's another page. There we go. We got some deep fried frogs and pepper salt. Frogs in black pepper sauce. Stir fried frogs with celery. Think I've got to have any of those? Probably not. I almost had a heart attack then. I thought I lost my ticket, but it was in one of my pockets. Whew. Don't want to be starting weight again. I 
been waiting 32 minutes so far, and it's still over 40 people in front of me. It's a ticket. Wonder how long this is going to be. I've actually just grabbed myself a That's stool. There's plenty lying around somewhere. A few people are grabbing them just to sit on the pavement and on the road. So it's up to number A54 now. And it's been exactly 40 minutes since I've been here. I guess that's the problem if you come on a Saturday night in prime time dinner time. Oh well. Hopefully it's worth waiting for. So I've managed to get a seat. I didn't have to wait my full quota of numbers because I was just sitting in front of the washing up bowl. And when one of the waitresses came to the washing up, I just politely moved out to the side like everybody should do. She then thanked me and asked me what my ticket number was. So I showed her the number. She asked me how many people were there. So I just said one person. And then she just said, okay, come in. So I'm sitting down. The time is two minutes to eight. So I've literally been here an hour. I've got myself a Harbin beer. It was the cheapest beer they had. I didn't get Sprite or Coke because I'm very thirsty. And I wanted a large drink. And that bottle's pretty big. I've ordered the stir-fried beef with potatoes and black pepper. That's the signature dish they do here. That's in the most popular one. It's one of their main images in their menu. And I'm now looking forward to having my dinner. Cheers. So I am sharing a table with some people. There's a couple just in front of me by there. Um, I'd imagine they might bring somebody by here as well. There's a face by the side of me. It's not too bad, I'm against the wall this side. And then one of the smaller rooms, um, I'm right by the door, which is just behind me, it's behind the camera light by there. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the food. Hopefully it's worth the wait. What's on? So this is my dinner. Stir fried beef, potatoes and a black pepper sauce. Their signature dish. So here we go. Let's try it for the first time, shall we? Let's see how I've done it. Try the potato first, so just standard potato. Yep, that's the potato. Now let's try the beef. Mm. It's very nice. It's got a spice to it, a kick to it because of black pepper. Oh yeah, I can already feel my lips tingling a little bit. I guess you can kind of call it like half a roast dinner. <laughs> you got beef, you got potatoes. Just need some gravy, green beans, some cream, yolks of pudding. But the beef's really nice. So, so there's a closer look at the beef. Really good. I'm enjoying it. Like I have to admit, I thought it'd be quite weird sharing a table with other people. But I don't think anybody really cares. They don't pay attention to you. They're just engrossed in their own little conversation. I don't even think they've looked at me once. I, uh, I'm really enjoying this food. I know it doesn't really look traditional Chinese food, if I'm honest. I imagine stir fries, you know, with a sauce, lots of different vegetables, and some kind of meat. But I thought I'd try this because it is their signature flesh and eat what are they are most famous for. And it's really tasty. So, here's a little history about Dai Play Doms. Basically, they came about after the Second World War when people just needed to make a living. So we started cooking and selling food on the street. So the government decided to like start licensing it because not everybody could be able to sell food on the street. So Dai Pai Dongs came about by a government issued license to sell food. And at the time, and at the time, they actively encouraged it as a way of making money for the locals who the economy was just simply decimated after the Second World War. Then, as time goes by, the government started to stop issuing new licenses. So all the Dai Pai Dongs in existence now had licenses from decades ago. 
and it can't be transferred to anybody new apart from people within the same family. And I believe there's only 25 Dai Pai Dongs left in Hong Kong now. So there's only 25 Dai Pai Dongs that are still left, still originate from the original family. And sadly, year by year, there's less and less as the families die out. The children of those families don't actually want to take on the license anymore. So they can only operate as long as the licensee is still alive. So the Dai Pai Dong license holder, who would be a family member from the original Dai Pai Dong license, may not longer work in the restaurant anymore, but they just subcontract that out to somebody beneath them. I'm not sure about in the case of this one, although it does say it's been here since 1956, was it? I think it's in the menu. But these places are such a great traditional food place to come and visit. And I really think it should be on everybody's itinerary to experience some traditional free food here in Hong Kong. Anyway, I don't think you're able to hear me, so I'll continue this conversation later. So look at that, I've finished my dinner and it's still at 85, so I was 92. So it always pays to be polite. It only took a little bit of moving it to the one side to let the lady wash her pot. And she let me in early. So there's a lesson to fear. Always be nice to people and it pays back. Thank you. Thank you. Food was great. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so that's me eating her a Dai Pai Dong for the first ever time. And I was very, very impressed. So if you're in this neighborhood of Shang Shipo, come here to the Oi Man Sing, Dai Pai Dong, which is down the street here. And after you wait, you'll have a lovely meal. Highly recommended, highly recommended. Thumbs up. So just for reference, that meal came to 168 Hong Kong dollars. The beer, I think, was about 30 in that. So for potatoes, beef, stir fry in a pepper sauce and a beer half in ice, I think it was called. 168 Hong Kong dollars, and I think that was really worth it. So I'm now going to take bus 2E to Temple Street Night Market and have a look what they've got for sale there, because I still haven't really bought any souvenirs yet for people, and I'm going home tomorrow night. So Temple Street Night Market, have a look around. If I don't see anything there, I'm probably going to go back to Don Don Donkey, where I was a couple of nights ago, because I've got under strict instructions from my daughter to get some anime stuff. And Matthew, my son, wants some different flavoured Kit Kats. And the time is now just after 8.30. What's this bus here? Two E. Yeah. So this is the bus I want, the Temple Neat Straight Night Market. Thank you. What I should point out as well, when you walk around the streets in Hong Kong, you might notice drips falling on you and think, oh, it must be starting to rain. But it's not. It's actually all the air conditioning units on the buildings above us just dripping and leaking. So you can kind of see pretty much every single apartment in these blocks of flats has an air conditioning unit hanging out the side and they do drip every now and again. Anyway, here we are at Temple Street Night Market. Go in and see what goodies we might buy. And of course, if I see anything I like, I'm gonna use this opportunity to start haggling the price down as well. Usually you can at least knock about 40% off the price of everything if you, if you try hard enough. To be honest, nothing's really taken my fancy just yet. It's all a bit tat, <laughs> if I'm honest. I don't need any toys. I don't need some knockoff t-shirts. 
I don't need some of that stuff. Like some of the artwork's pretty nice. I don't need a new belt. I don't need any handbags. I don't need a t-shirt that isn't really a legit McDonald's t-shirt. There's also quite a lot of stalls missing and I, from what I understand, some of them haven't managed to survive the last few years of not having any tourists coming into the city. But that's a bit sad. They've probably been here for years uh, because the last couple of years they've just haven't been able to make a living and they've moved on. I am on the lookout for a new power bank. So one I've got isn't really the best. I want one with a PD, so power delivery just to charge my phone and my camera really quickly while I'm on the move. So I just had a look at one stall that had some then. And the price was 220 Hong Kong dollars. That's about 24 pounds. So I could actually get it cheap, something like that cheaper back home from Amazon. I thought this place was meant to be cheap. Well, granted, I could probably knock the price down. But it looks like the quite a popular restaurant there as well. And something else I'm on the lookout for is a st storage for my SD cards. I've got a number of them uh, back at home, but I want to keep one as a main archive. So I've seen one on Amazon for about 30 quid, and I assume I could probably get one somewhere here for a lot cheaper than that. Well, I assume it holds about 60 SD cards. Unlike most people who use an SD card, then once they've backed it up to their hard drive, they then delete it and use the SD card again. I keep four, no, three different states of redundancy when it comes to my backup. I add it to an SSD drive when I'm editing. I then put that onto a external hard drive and I also upload it to one of my servers. I then keep the original SD card. So just in case, for whatever reason, I've still got them and I keep them in separate places as well. I know that's way overkill that most people would do, but it's, I just like to be secure that I'll never lose any footage or any photographs because that happened to me once in the past when I had a corrupted hard drive many, many years ago. And since then, I've been super paranoid to make sure I've got backups of backups of backups. So I've got quite a large collection of SD cards <laughs> that I need to keep safe somewhere as well as loads of external hard drives littering around my home. Okay, so I've come to the end of Temple Street Night Market now. That seemed a lot shorter than I remember before. Or maybe it was not shorter, it's just the fact that there was nothing that took my fancy at all. So I don't know what to do now. Um, I might go over to the... What time is it? Okay, it's nine o'clock. I might go over to the Mong Kok area because there's a number of stores there as well. So I might have a look around there. Okay, I'm just gonna look at my phone and see how I'm gonna get there. I was just about to start looking at my phone over by there, but I think it might be a place of ladies of the night, if you know what I mean. There's some pictures of ladies in the window and a couple of ladies with very short skirts standing outside. So I'm not gonna loiter around that area just in case somebody approaches me. So I'll cut to the end of the street and have a look at my phone, I think. Okay, I've had a look at Google Maps and I'm gonna go to the Moncock Night Market. I was wondering if that, maybe that's the one I went to before, not the Temple Street Night Market. It's a long time ago, back in 2006, so I can't remember everything I did. Just rough outlines of the places I visited. Anyway, I'm going to catch a bus again. This time it's a straight ahead, and I'm going to catch a bus. 287X. Easy to remember. I don't know when the bus is going to be coming. Okay, here's a stop, 287X. So now I just wonder how long the bus is going to take to arrive. I'm getting a bit more confident using the buses now. Before I was a bit nervous, but with the help of Google Maps and looking out the window, I'm pretty safe in knowing that I'm probably going in the right direction. I'm going to assume that that means it's a five minute wait before it arrives. the bus let's take a look around shall we well that's very bright i suppose it acts like a beacon to get you to go there and buy their fruit you got 
pig's ears, some other stuff. I don't even know how to identify certain things, eh? So I don't think we'll be here for very long because it says it closes at 10 o'clock, the Moncock Night Market does, and it is half nine. Although I think half an hour is plenty, to be honest. I think it's on the next street along. I can hear some music playing and it's quite loud noises. So, is it going to be this one? Down here, maybe. To Google Maps, this is the Moncox Night Market here on Portland Street. But it looks very different than the Temple Street Night Market. There's no stalls anywhere. So I don't know if they're just classing all the shops on the side of the road as the market. Looking down, I can't see anything. The road is full of cars. I'll keep walking down a bit. I can't really see anything down the road either. It's just full of cars and vehicles. So I'm not sure what's going to happen here. I'll keep walking anyway, see what we come to. Got McDonald's and some other restaurants on our left hand side. Let's just keep walking. Not in a rush to be anywhere anyway. Like there's certainly noises and stuff coming. Like there's an outside atmosphere going on somewhere. I just can't see anything. Okay, so I've walked around for a bit, but I can't really find any market stalls. So I'm gonna hit it on the head, I think, and head back towards Simsha Shui. When I'm there, I'm gonna probably go to Don Don Donkey to get some souvenirs for everybody. I don't know why I need to get Japanese souvenirs from Hong Kong, but that's what they want, so that's what I'm going to get. So I'm going to catch the MTR near from Hong Kong Station and go to Sim Sha Shui. Oh wow, there's even a decathlon in Hong Kong. Didn't realise that. Plenty of those back home. I've just got out of the Simsa Shui station and I'm now walking up the road to get to Don Don Donkey. Should be a four minute walk according to Google Maps. So number of stores are on each side of the road here. A lot of them are closed now because it is time for 10 o'clock. So once I go to Don Don Donkey, by the way, I've only got 1% left of battery on this, on this camera, so it might die at any moment. I'm gonna to go to Don Don Donkey, get some souvenirs, get myself a drink and a cake for a snack and then head back to the hotel. Well, I've made it into Don Quixote. My power bank has charged my camera a little bit, so I do a little bit of filming in here, not too much. I've already got a basket full of stuff. I don't want to know how much this is going to cost because everything in here isn't very cheap. So I've been in here about half an hour already walking around everywhere and it's a bit of a maze. It's really difficult to find anything you want, but I think I've got enough stuff anyway. So I might try and find a checkout. Look at that, 150 just for some grapes. Wow, that's like 16 pounds for a punnet of grapes. So I've totally lost my bearings and I don't know where the checkout is. I think I'm going around in circles. Sure, I've been by here before. So I've had a selection of these cakes. I've eaten them later in the hotel room. And they've got plenty of hot food as well if you want to get a snack. Okay, enough looking around. I need to find the checkout. Right, I found these on the floor. I'm going to follow them to the cashier. And I'm going to head out and head back to the hotel. It's crazy the amount of people here. And considering it's pretty late, there's still a lot of people who are out shopping. I suppose so am I, so I've got no excuse. Can you believe I just spent over 540 Hong Kong dollars in Don Don Donkey on basically nothing? Just some snacks, a couple of drinks, some cakes for me to eat in the room and just some toiletries. Wow, so that works out to be just under £60. Pound. That was surprising. I guess everything's extra expensive in there because everything's imported from Japan. So obviously they've got to bring it over here. And look how popular the place is. They must be making a right killing in there. Okay, the night's over. I'm going to walk back to the hotel. It says it's going to take about 16 minutes, according to Google Maps. 
um, to bring you guys along for the ride. I say the ride, <laughs> the torturous walk home with my feet, which are absolutely killing. I'm hobbling like I'm about 90 years old, which I'm not quite there yet. Well, I'm back at the hotel. I decided not to vlog on the way back from Don Don Donkey. My feet are hurting just too much. I just want to get back to the hotel, grab a quick shower and get ready for bed. So if you made it this far in this video, thank you so much for watching. It's really appreciated. If you're new here, my name's Mark and I make travel and theme park videos from around the world. And if you've enjoyed watching this episode, please think about liking, subscribing and hitting that notification bell button. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Next time on Travel Shorts Hong Kong.